So again, where uh, the camera is going, just to ask your permission to yeah. uh, to record this for teaching purposes, yeah. and uh, officially to thank you for being willing to come and be part of our learning, <coughs> and I will at the same time do what I can to make it useful for you. Thank you. So, could you tell us a little about yourself, about what sorts of things you like to do, what sorts of things you are pleasing to you and are satisfying to you? That are an expression of who you are. Like when when you being you, when Diane's being Diane, what are you what are you doing? What sorts of things are you up to? Okay. Um, well, <laughs> I'm a storyteller, so I have to figure out which story to tell you. Well, um, tell us that one. Oh no, well I will tell you this one. Okay. I've spent this morning, uh, I've got the flu, so I'm not at work today, but I thought I'd come here and I also thought if I did go to work and then come here I'd be completely stressed out of my brain and it wouldn't help. So I've spent this morning um, uh, drawing a map of an island which is in a book that I've written but the map I decided was me and so I'm pretty well poised to tell you just at this point um, what I do like doing. So the the map is a it, the map is the island is a kite that's flying in the sea and so the sea is very important to me and the air and flying and stuff and it's in a different earth it's not on this earth i have never felt that comfortable being on this earth mm -hmm. i don't like it very much and in mm -hmm. fact i said to someone who was giving me a massage last week i actually wish i'd never been born so mm -hmm. there's there's a deep self-loathing lurking beneath me so let's let that be the leviathan in the sea because um, I don't really want to have it that much longer. Um, so on the island when I was looking at it today I was trying to figure out what sort of myths I would create about me mm. and I had talked to some other women who were warrior women or this sort of a woman or that sort of a woman and I actually have studied literature a lot and I like The Tempest and The Tempest Shakespeare play mm -hmm. Ireland and I just I thought no I'm, I'm like Ariel the sprite who helps Prospero but I'm actually a magician so that's felt very powerful today to think that I am a magician mm -hmm. I'll get down to some reality in a minute for you but over, over on the left of the so there's a that's I guess the heart of the island on the left point of the compass or the triangle that I'm thinking about um, is a university that I created called Dalmas which is an anagram of wisdom and wisdom the seeking of wisdom is very important to me and that is an area that's sort of full of art and it actually studies all the other things that are on the island as well and up the top is um, magic and I guess the sense of magic or being able to create magic the writing I am doing is for children and probably more teenagers or I guess attempting to do a Narnia thing to create some sort of sense some sort of allegory you know like the Lord of the Rings I really like the Lord of the Rings on the right hand side is some um, sort of spiritual stuff and really helping people and helping I've had abuse in my past and weird crap in my past and have had to live with that all my life and so wanting to find some way and I know that I'm a very creative and very talented really intelligent person and I want to find some way to help people I'm an ex-nurse I don't nurse anymore because I couldn't use that to help people <coughs> on the bottom is um, uh, well I guess I had written down you know science you say on the bottom I'm following the triangle, oh, the triangle down oh, it's the bottom a, it's, a, it's, it's sorry, a four sided triangle. triangle it's a yeah. di diamond sorry oh, it's a diamond yeah. it's a kite yeah, yeah. Okay. it's a diamond shaped oh, kite oh you said a kite yeah, it's a kite. Yeah, sure. And it's interesting for me because Tasmania's there and I was born here and it's oh. been a reluctant love-hate relationship with Tasmania, but I feel that there's something for me to give to Tasmania. Anyway, and I work in the South and I write policy. So there's kind of policy, the science of life, the, just the nitty-gritty that you have to do is down there. Oh, yeah. um, so, and I, and I, I do want to have some impact. I am political and I feel that there is stuff that can be achieved through public administration which, in which I'm involved at the moment. So I'm an ex-nurse. I then did a PhD in literature on Patrick White and Sidney Nolan, so art and visual arts always been very important to me as well as writing and literature and poetry. And I'm now writing policy in the Department of Health and Human Services. And I've just located a job about a new grant that's come out about working with cancer networks and I think I might apply for that because my current job is just sucking my soul out because I've done sort of 
bland bureaucracy for about two years. You're living cancer years. at the moment, that's right. Sorry? Where you're living is like a cancer eating away. Yeah, I guess so. And mm. cancer, I've had a love-hate relationship with that too because everybody's always tried to put me in cancer when I was in nursing. I used to say, no, it makes me cry. I don't want to go there. I don't want to mm. go there. Mm. But creating a network around Tasmania, putting the, you know, the care, the community sector organisations, the all the different bits and pieces that people need, that would be a good job. Yeah, so, a complex woman, isn't she? Yep. And then off the bottom of the, um, off the bottom of the kite, of course, is a tale of little islands. But oh, really? I haven't quite figured them all out yet, but there's sort of there's some secrets down there and just mm. just lots of special childhood stuff. So look, that's probably enough mm. <laughs> to begin with. Mm. And um, that's sort of an overview of, of where you are. There's a lot of anger as well. Hey? There's a lot of anger in oh, me yeah. as well. Okay. Oh, intensity, passion, that stuff. I've noticed intensity. Mm. That's apparent. Yeah, good. Jokes. Um, and it sounds like you. <coughs> some of the things you like to do uh, involve visual, conceptual, yeah. uh, uh, or a blending of art and, and literature. Yeah, that, art, something? creativity, and creativity. art. And, and in, mm. when I have to go into that, you know, work sector, mm. deep thinking and problem solving. Mm. And being politically aware and being able to yes. meld all those different people that need to be melded yeah. together. I and can the do melding that. is such a challenge because, you know, there is what you're wishing and hoping and wanting for. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, over on the right there. Mm. And yet you've got down on the bottom here, you've got the. The, the absolute of, reality you know, that I work with assholes who couldn't stuff. give a shit and yeah. I've just been writing the strategic direction for health and human services for the next 15 to 20 years. Oh KPMG, God. a bunch of chartered accountants, wrote the draft. Yeah, sure, sure. I was asked to pretty it up yeah. and I'm not allowed to talk to anybody. No. It's not just the vision for health and human services, the department of, it's the whole of Tasmania and mm. we're not talking to anyone about it because... No, so it I have to deal with that next week when I go back after the flu and just say, OK, if we're not going to talk to anyone about mm. this extraordinarily bizarre thing you've asked me to do, I'll have to withdraw myself because it makes me feel sick yeah. that you would think that was appropriate. So. Yes, I mean, and some of those things you say make you feel sick. I remember a book years ago saying, love your illness is keeping you healthy. I mean, there are some things that if we didn't get sick of, mm. I don't know. Yeah. You need need treatment, need yeah. nursing. Yeah. So well, you, need some... to know, you need not to have leprosy of the I soul. I reckon. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so, and, and of course that's one of the dilemmas of being sensitive. Yeah, and my GP actually recently said to me, and I mean, look, I, I thought this was a reasonable explanation, although I don't fully understand schizophrenia, but, but I'm a nurse and I've seen schizophrenia, so I have some understanding of it. And she sort of said, if you took you out to that extremity over there, you would be schizophrenic. And mm. that's, that's the, the, you know, I do sometimes feel like this, I don't know, thing that... <laughs> Oh, yeah. If you go far enough down those islands, you'll end up, there, up at the Antarctic. Yeah, yeah, so, that's, that's, yeah. And in fact, if you go far enough, you'll end up at the Arctic. The other so, one, yeah. So I don't know. I think we're all... One of my friends, a um, psychiatrist in Melbourne, was called a failed psychotic by one of his clients. Yeah, so, I'm a failed psychotic. Yeah, I think we're... Yeah. Mm. Some of us are quite happy to fail at that. But, uh, <laughs> we've we've definitely all got the... <laughs> We're all on that continuum somewhere. Yeah. No. You know, when I used to when I used to nurse mental health patients, I would feel as though I ha I empathised so strongly that I would think, Oh God, I've got that. Yeah, and I'd well, you probably you know, have. Um, like yeah. the rest of us. No, but my husband used to say, But you can walk down the path with them and hold their hand for a little while, but you can know how to turn around and come back. Mm. And that was a nice way to put it mm. as well, as well as being a failed psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> But I took a few psychotropic drugs in my in, in my teens, and that was to escape the pain, I suppose. Of, you know, I mean, I'm now rationalising it, but I just thought I was having fun. But um, well, you might have been crazy if you hadn't. Yeah, maybe. But I mean, that, that's my my tendency to really to paranoia and acute psychosis. I I, I do think if I'd continued, I would have. You mm -hmm. know, something could have happened. But it's an interesting notion because it's very closely related to sensitivity. Some people are not willing to go to the edge. Yeah. They stick right in the middle. No, I'm an edge guy. Yeah, and then if you're on the on the edge and on the fringe, then you know you get into. And I'm a bit. I read the other day just in stars something about Sagittarians were um, emotionally daring. I said, like, God, I'm an emotional dare devil. You know, I, mm. I, I will do emotional things and, mm. and go out there and sometimes and, and balance is becoming a big word in my life because I have to get some balance? sort of balance. I just have to have a balance. I mean, it's okay to be emotionally daring, but not emotionally foolish to the point that you. Well, you do have the other points. 
Yeah, I have. I guess there's a balance there. Spots, that, yeah, mm. so maybe that island is yeah. my sort of... Could be. It's been useful anyway this morning, but I knew I was coming here and I thought, oh, I might as well do something that would help me to come oh. here. But I didn't know you were going to ask me that So now, now that you've solved your problem, I'm wondering what else we can do. Because if you've got a map and yeah, you know if you want to get to the nitty-gritty, if you want to get to what the learning, the you want to get to the again, spirituality. Self-loathing, no, but the self-loathing is the thing. It comes up mm. and it inhabits me, I guess, oh, and yeah. then I... I, it immobilises me. Oh, okay. So you um, want to do something about that? Well, I don't know. I, I, you, that's, see, I'm a global thinker too, and you haven't really given me... A, I know that I'm here for some purpose for you guys, but I suppose I need to know... Well, either I'm here for a purpose for you guys, or there's Primarily some purpose for, for me. Primarily for you. Um, now, <coughs> if we could do something here that would be useful, would, there, would you like to do something with the self-loathing, or would you like to get some balance? Well, what, when I, I, did have a, <coughs> I did have a user range of different um, support people, and I've sort of realised recently that I probably burn friends out, so I, I need to kind of not use friends for support. I need to pay for support, mm -hmm. or, you know, or come to a session like this where I'm assuming I'm being bulk billed or whatever, but set up support things and then friends are over here kind of for fun or, or for deep chats or you know you need to categorize the people because I don't You're manage very good at that placing way. Things yeah, geographically, I think don't you? Place things, but mm. um, so I had a, a massage the other day with a woman who does kind of intuitive sort of massage, and she said that my body was crying out that I was scattered. And so maybe I've gathered myself all in today into the island, but I was scattered, and I just didn't have any self power. So I've been thinking oh. the last few days, what is power, and that I needed to get my power back. So I guess a self loathing stops me from having power, but it would oh. be something to do with having power back. I mean. I, I can go into a meeting and seem quite powerful, but mm -hmm. there's something awry in me that um, <clears throat> I've not been willing to... Um, yeah, so I don't know. So you, you sense a, uh, an approaching willingness to do something about that? That, that, that arrives? Oh, or? definitely. Yeah. No, I've, I've, I'm sick to death of counselling. Okay. I have oh, been right. counselled to death. Yeah. I feel like the woman in the Bible, who in the parables, who is bleeding and goes up to Jesus, you know, and touches his gown because mm. I just feel that counsellors just go on and on and on. You know, what happened? And yeah, mm. blah, 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 happened. You know, Woody Allen said he'd been in analysis for 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> he'd give it one more, and if that didn't work, he's going to Lourdes. <laughs> so it's a similar kind of thing to... Yeah. Yeah, it just yeah. shouldn't be that hard. So, if so only I'd worn a gown today, I would have felt uh, more <laughs> oh, powerful myself. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, I would have touched it. <laughs> <laughs> So is the you know and that's the question is the life after counselling what do you do when all of well I've decided you know? to come up with strategies and I started oh, okay. going to a life coach and oh, then, okay. then then this range of counsellors and so yeah. I have one counsellor and I see her once every two 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 months about work oh, it's yeah. how to deal with my boss who oh, is yeah. an asshole my yeah. boss is fully an asshole mm -hmm. and look I like him he's a nice man well, but the he behaves part of health, you know, yeah. if you didn't have an asshole that's we'd true be sick, we would so. be sick mm -hmm. and so I have him to go to and I have someone else and then you know this body I'm dis I, I escape out of my body. I, mm. I won't sit in my body. I'm often not in my body, and that's as a result of abuse, uh, sexual abuse as a very little child. Mm -hmm. um, so reconnecting myself in with my body. What am I telling all of this for? I've forgotten. Um, but but you know, it started with the idea of what would be useful. Oh, yeah, counselling. Sick where, of counselling. Where would you... If you if yeah, no, it was strategies. You said solutions. So strategies. some kind of solution yeah. to... You know, I'd like to be in my body and yeah. kind of be okay to hang in there. Yeah, for it to be okay. Yeah. Mm. And, I mean, I don't mind escaping. I like escaping. I'm short-sighted. Sure. I prefer having my glasses off so I can't quite see you because mm. I grew up like that. And mm. um, Well, there are some things you don't want to see. Uh, no, and there are some no, things no you don't one, want to see. Need to see. And, I mean, when I was being abused, I had my eyes shut. Yeah. I can't tell you which of my relatives it was. Mm. And that was a little good little girl strategy, you know, to say... Yeah, see no evil. Yeah, because then I couldn't tell because the person, mm. if I told, probably would have been was. shot. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, there's all that sort of ghastliness. But mm. telling you that story is not going to get me anywhere. And, and it's also that, not, not that pleasant a story. No. <clears throat> so the more pleasant, the more uh, story that would well, get you somewhere. Well, the more I can be here, I'm 48. I'm oh, sick yeah. of it. You know, oh, I'm yeah. sick of having to be five. I can't even tell you how old I was. I was five or six mm. or seven, some age around there. Mm. So you'd like to be in your body, 48, here. 
And I'm, see, I'm fairly good. talented, yeah. but I can't. I, and I was used as an experiment in my stupid bloody, you know, education. Let's put her in grade four, in from grade four to grade ten, in with low achievers, so we can see what sort of an effect she has on them. Well, that had an effect on me. Yeah, so, it's another abuse, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. I need to know. I need to look at all the tools I've got mm. to be me mm. and to do whatever I've got to do in the world and do it. Okay. I'm sick of having to cry every time I need to say that. Yeah, because yeah. crying is not a powerful thing to do in a fucking professional setting, you know. I've got a grip in the professional setting, I don't cry, but I need to be more in charge, you know. I need that power thing, I need to be allowed to exist. I said to you, I don't even want to exist, I don't feel capable of existing. Well, it's not that you don't want to, you haven't learned how to. Well, don't show have this to power. the health department. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you haven't learned how to have power in yourself to be able to exist in the way that you want to. I didn't mention my boss's name, did I? I forgot I was being filmed. <laughs> no, I didn't. We won't say what year it was and then you can't tell. Mm. Sorry, um, mm. I've forgotten your name. Greg? Yeah, something like that. Rob. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Dear, I might be one of your more interesting clients, but... <clears throat> oh, no, I don't think so. Don't think so. No, you might like to hope so, but no. <laughs> no, no, no. My I've met people much more interesting. Good. Than you. Yes, no. Yeah. My husband's a quite boring night, so but, um, far. But anyhow, I'm yeah. waiting for you to lift your game a little bit. He but. said, "Could you please just realise that everybody suffers with human frailty, and you're not that different." <laughs> <laughs> so, where, where, what, if, what sort of help do you think might be useful for you here? What? Carolyn has suggested that you come here. Does she well, apparently you into doing this some or? hypnosis thing. Yeah, and hypnosis, yes. Yeah. Um, so where did you get the idea that that would help you to feel more powerful? Well, um, I, I recently started having some hypnosis with Carla Fenton. I went to um, my GP in April to have some moles burnt off and promptly burst into tears and my vitamin D was very low and I was, you know, apparently down. And uh, she suggested I see Carla, who's a... I don't know if you know Carla, but she's about 70 and a GP no, in Sandy Bay who um, oh, okay. uh, has worked with sexual assault service for many years and does grief and such and such, and anyway, um, oh, hypnotherapy. Yeah. Yeah. So I had been having a bit of that and I was calm and confident to have that. Because um, oh, yeah. I've always been a bit nervous about hypnotherapy. I suppose it's a sense of being completely out of control or something. Mm. But I never completely seem, I can remember all the sessions and they've just been useful, it's just been nice, she's like a grandmother figure to me and I hate my grandmother so it's sort of nice to have a nice grandma figure yeah, yeah. and she just says nice things like, I can't remember what they are but, but it's helpful. very ordinary, nice, nice ordinary things, things that you to replace some of the ghastly thoughts in my head. I'm getting a lot better, yeah. I used to not be able to say I'm okay, then I could just say I'm okay. I can't remember what the words used to be in my head, but I can now say I'm lovely, which I think is a great leap forward. That's about three or four years, but I only started seeing... You can't um, really say... Um, if, you, if you can say I'm lovely, you can't really maintain self-loathing very well with that. Oh, no, but there's other voices. Oh, OK. There's lots of voices. Oh, OK. Yeah, I mean, I don't mean I'm hearing voices and I am psychotic, mm -hmm. but there are just the self-speak. If you if you yeah, were right. to stop and listen to it or you suddenly yeah. think, oh, God, where did that thought come from? Yes, yeah, so I'm glad I'm not the only one who gets those. Mm -hmm. <coughs> OK, so there have been some help and some benefit from Carla. And, uh, I think it's just... I'm good at being going into a calm sort of state. I mean, I used to do yoga and I went and joined an ashram when I was about 20, I think it was. And, you know, they do very long meditations for, say, 45 minutes. I was the only one awake at the end of that who had followed the whole thing and got to the point everyone else was asleep. But I, I have a high ability to concentrate, so I guess I just sort of am awake while she's saying the stuff. And the last session we did, she actually took me down a corridor and she said, which door do you want to go in? There was a purple door and I went in the purple door. I mean, this is all in my imagination. And when I got in there, it just said, you're perfectly capable of being in charge. And that she was just, said that? No, I said that. Said that, that was just a message in the room. Okay. And then I was lying on a bed and with my eyes closed and I could see like a, a big thing came out of my head like that. And I felt like I was a Ku Klux Klan member. And that was the picture I had. And then I said to her, look, 
I can have a power, but to me benevolence is very, is very important and benevolence has never been linked with any of the powers I've known and no. so that was the revelation I had in that, so okay. I've been thinking about that. But benevolent and power. Benevolent power and then when I had that message the other day, she again said you feel very powerless and you, you don't appear to have any power and you seem very scattered or shattered, I think was the word she meant. And on that particular day I was feeling pretty crap but I had the flu. Um, so I've just been thinking, well, what is power and, you know, how am I going to use that? But I guess to begin with, you know, I see a life coach as well. My primary goal is health and well-being because I figure I can't do anything else if I'm not, you know, physically and emotionally and mentally feeling OK. Sure. And um, I've just been thinking, well, if I wanted to have power over myself and be powerful in my own life, just, just even just to be, because sometimes just being... I mean, I do be. I mean, I, I, I'd lead an ordinary life. But just to engage with that sense of being in charge. I mean, my parents still will say to me, have you got your key? Have you got your, you know, it's, there's just this infantilising that goes on. And, and you know, I, I can't do anything, really. And I just, so, so the message is that Diane is completely incapable, stupid, mentally unstable. I took an overdose when I was 15 because I wanted to run away from home. Right. I loathed and detested my parents. My way out was that. So now I'm suicidal, completely yeah, you've mentally tried a lot incompetent. Of ways out. Yeah. And you haven't yet found a way in. No, no. Although we're living in, in a lovely old church. We've bought an old church opposite Ogilvy High and I love being in there. It's like I've gone into Narnia. It is so gorgeous and I've made the pulpit into a wishing chair and hung fairies above it. And I mean, it's just grand and beautiful. So I've found a place that I just, I, you know, I almost say I can't believe that I live there. It's just so gorgeous, if you know what I mean. So that's... So there's this lovely external place, and it's, I just kind of want to match the. And there is a lot, I have lots of lovely imagined so internal places. Tea. Okay, I drink lukewarm tea, that's, and I like that. <laughs> I've got very cold hands, Heavy? so. Do you want I to like keep holding it to, no, keep no, to no. warm your hands? No, 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 I feel we can put it down. And you know about how to go into hypnosis? Well. With girl, are you. Well, she just says to look a little spot, but I mean, you know, that's not what puts me... I don't know, look, you, you're the kind of... You're meant to be telling me some of this. I feel, <laughs> feel you're over-giving me the power. <laughs> oh, sorry. No. I thought that's what you wanted. <laughs> right, give some of it back. Come on, you've got too well, much power. Do whatever you, you want, because no, I'm waiting no, for you for the time. I'm going to infantilise no. yourself, and you just do what you're told. Or just sit there and be quiet, OK? <laughs> Thank you. No, I don't know how to hip do hypnosis. She tells well, me to concentrate on the spot, what, what, and what I, I do... What I would invite you to do, instead of me telling you how to go into hypnosis, <clears throat> would be for you to notice yourself what's hap what happens if you were to just sit as you are and to be any <coughs> way that you are right now yeah and then as you notice how it is to be that way and as you start to focus on whatever aspect of that you can choose that you would like would be a benefit to you Okay, but do you want me to tell you anything? Because I'll probably want to shut my eyes, but... Well, I'd actually prefer you shut your mouth. I think you've done more than enough talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so rude. I mean, you've asked me I'm all rude of this stuff. That's right. <laughs> but I think that you're powerful enough to be able to take straight talk, so... Oh, yeah, no, I don't mind. No. Um, but... So I don't mind whether... No, actually, I don't mind whether you speak or not, or right. have your eyes open or not. But I just need to know what you want to achieve, because I do feel slightly compelled to do what you want. Not, 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 you know. But now we're in deep trouble. No, well only because, I mean, I could just sit here, I don't know, I mean, I'm assuming you know more about hypnosis than me, but I could just sit here and shut my eyes and you think that I'm in before. there, and yeah. do you want me to do anything for you, or am I just going no, off into I, a... I want uh, you to do something for you. Right. And I'd like you to not know yet just exactly what that is that I want you to do for you. Okay. And for you to be at this stage a little unsure about exactly what it is that you yeah, want to do for you. You've achieved that. So then if you could be in that uncertainty mm -hmm. and wondering about what it is that you are going to do, but for the moment to just <clears throat> begin to notice how it is for you to be doing what you are doing. Right. Maybe a little bit like a meditation where you're just aware of what's happening, a kind of mindfulness. Yeah. Where, for example, you could notice that your left foot is where it is, that your right foot is where it is. Yeah. Uh, to notice that you're sitting already just that little bit more still than you were. 
and the um, muscles in your face are changed a little, they soften. Breathe, that's right, and your breathing is just that subtly more, yeah, to my observation, settled. <coughs> And if, instead of closing your eyes or deciding whether to close them or keep them open, if, could you just notice your eyelids? And as if you were willing not to have power over your eyelids or to let have them power over you, but just that's it. Notice what they want to do when they're given an opportunity to do what <coughs> seems for them something that they can be just exactly how they are, perfectly fine, just so. And then, as you continue to allow whatever is happening for you, within yourself, that you can notice, that you can become aware of, that you can make any adjustment in your thinking, you can reposition your awareness in any way that's going to be helpful. And as you allow yourself to, to, as it were, find yourself in that experience of losing yourself in this experience so that you don't even need to know exactly where you're going, but you can be very aware of where you are. And simply by noticing how it is for you to breathe, Maybe noticing the sense of the air in your nose. The way you can sit comfortably enough, secure enough, experiencing enough. And realizing that when you write, the writing that you write, you can write those words if you're writing by hand, shape those letters. If you're writing on a computer, to let your fingers find those, uh, those letters on the keyboard. Sometimes not even needing to know where they're going, and yet finding that they find their way onto the page, onto the screen, onto the paper, wherever they find their way. In a way that in the past, however difficult it may have been, to tell the difference between a small b and a small d, where that line went, where that circle went, is now so unimportant because now you know that's the letter. That's what it looks like. That's where it is. And maybe even not need to know that it's a b or a d because it's part of a word. And as this experience is continuing, my invitation for you, Diane, and it's just an invitation, is for you to allow my words to be background your experience to be foreground, to find your own capacity to move <clears throat> to any part of your experience that is useful to you, that's helpful to you, that can contribute to your sense of power within yourself in a benevolent way, that can be useful for you and helpful for you. And it may be that as this experience continues that you can find yourself remembering what it's like to be in the place where you live. And to be in that place that's no longer a pulpit, that was, but isn't. And the fact that it was a pulpit is way less important than the fact that it is now what you have created it to be. And like in so many other areas of your life, and there can be a situation where I don't know if it would be okay for you to tell us if you're in that place that used to be a pulpit, do you stand up in that place? Do you sit in that place? Where do you place yourself in that pulpit that's not a pulpit? Can you put it into words without interrupting the experience? Um, Are you standing? Are you seated? I do both. Okay. Now, if you so, so, what can you imagine that you could do now? Would you like to stand or sit? Up to you. Well, I'm actually sitting now. Okay. Uh, so, if you were to sit and just look from where you're sitting, without giving us any explanation of what it means, could you just simply say what it is that you can see, what it is that you can be present to as you look? What do you see when you look straight ahead of you? Do 
Do you see seats or walls or a ceiling or what is it that you see? Well, there are two things going on because it's what you're saying, but mm. before that I was um, becoming a magician in the middle of that island I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, but as you're sitting in the, this, what was a pulpit, and you look out, what, are, what objects do you see? At home or now in my imagination? As if you were imagining now that you are at home. Oh, mm. well, there's a most beautiful stained glass window that's ah. um, beautifully fired and, okay. um, you yeah. know, one of those ones that they used to paint and ah, yeah. it's made in about 1920 and, and it's... And you see the colours? Oh, yeah, it's, mm. um, it's, um, it's Jesus with little children. It's, it's ah. that verse of let the little children come to me and... Yeah, suffer the little children. It actually says suffer the little children on it too. So if you can suffer the experience of letting that image come to you, you look at the stained glass, you look at that and you see that, and it's in some way internal because you're imagining this, but it's at the same time it's external because you're looking out at your home. And if you were to look out at that experience and see that out there, that image, that, those colours, that fire, those words, those ideas, and see that out there, and as it were, allow yourself to absorb that image, that feeling, those colours, it's out there, and in a way you've projected it out there because you're imagining it from here, but if you were to imagine here that you are there, and when you're there, you're in a different here, that is looking at what's there outside of you and bring that in. And when you allow that fire, because it was painted there, you allow that fire to come from outside and come into you and feel that fire in you, that benevolent, warming, powerful fire of suffering that, allowing that, because it is suffering as a word, but as you said, translating it is allowing. There's no pain in it. It's an allowing. So when you allow the warmth of that to be in you, to be yours, for you to be present to that and experience that, how does that feel? Do you feel that feeling and know it's yours? How does that feel? Um, just warm and warm calm. Warm and calm. Where do you feel that warmth? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. And do you feel any of it in your hands? Oh, yeah. No, in my whole body. But in your whole body. Here. Mostly in your chest. Okay. Now, when you feel that feeling in your chest, and it's a warm feeling, can you allow that warmth, as you say, it's all through your body? You can feel that? Mm-hmm. And can you let that warmth go all through your body to every nook and every cranny and every part of you, like into your thinking, into the dark crevices of your thoughts, of your memories, of your future, of your past. Just let that warmth radiate, because warmth does radiate. Radiates from that stained glass. And it's the stain in the glass that's painted that gives the fire and the warmth. And can you allow the warmth of that as it spreads through your body to spread back over the memories of the past and allow yourself to suffer that experience, to allow that experience as if that warmth can perfuse and radiate all the way back there. Mm -hmm. And just allow that to happen. Just give yourself time to experience that, not to even be bothered to understand it because in some ways it doesn't make sense. But without trying to make sense of it, can you just allow yourself to feel that warmth spreading back? And notice as the warmth spreads back, there is some calmness that spreads back. The still, small voice of calm. And can you feel that stillness and that warmth, that calmness as it spreads back? Mm -hmm. You don't need to spread it back too quickly. Just like writing can take time, just like drawing a map can take time. Just letting that spread back. 
can you let it take its own time? Not my time, not your time, but its own time. Because when that warmth and that fire, when that spreads all the way back with the calmness and the healing and the settling, just like the redness of that stained glass can spread, can perfuse through the whole of the house. So that warmth, as it spreads back, can also then be reflected forward. Back to the present time. It can be reflected even further forward into the future. So that as you look forward, look ahead to where you're headed, some of that same perfusion and there is a perfusion of perfusion of red warmth spreading not only spreading to the future but spreading to all uh, points of the compass and spread to the Whatever direction it is, it might be another world, but on this earth you could call it to the west. <clears throat> I think you said there was a university over there. Mm. And can you feel the warmth spreading to that university over in the west? Mm. If I can use the west and translate it, and spreading up to the top, up to the north. I remember what was to the right, but I can't remember what was up to the top. What's up there? Magic. Ah, how could I forget that? You know about the warmth there. Can you feel the warmth spreading up to there, up to the magic? So there is some warm, benevolent magic. Powerful, but warm and benevolent. And spreading over to the right, the spirituality. Is that what you said was over there? Benevolent, powerful, warm spirituality. <clears throat> How are you going to let that warmth spread down south? down to the bottom of that map. There's a lower point there. Well, what you didn't know is that the window uh -huh. was the man who bought the church before us was a Muslim man and uh -huh. he painted, he was an art teacher and he made the whole church that uh -huh. window. Okay. So the carpet is red, Jesus has uh -huh. a red gown on and the carpet is red uh -huh. and all the walls are green for the forest in the window and okay. then all around the windows is gold for the, there's a castle at the top of the, the picture and then there's the, the Jesus figure. So the red is actually all over the carpet. Can it spread down south? Yes, well that's the bottom isn't it, so it's, it's, yeah. it's there. Yes. And and yeah, also for many years I had an imaginary lounge room and the carpet was red mm. and this was mm. before I moved there and yeah, written good. into the carpet was um, the words, the peace that passes all understanding. Yeah. So that can specially go down to the bottom because that's where the well, policy and the administration It's certainly beyond understanding. Start. What happens down there with the logistics and the kind of day to day stuff, <laughs> you'd need magic to get any understanding of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you were to follow that down further. <clears throat> am I staying here where I am? I don't know. I don't know. You're, I'm worried about your time for you, but you will tell it's me. It's very magic. kind of you to worry about my time. <laughs> okay. I've always wanted someone to worry about my time. <laughs> I'm a okay, good time manager. I'm more than happy to stay here. <laughs> well, how about you stay here 
and if you, <coughs> we need you to go, we can tell you. Okay, the good. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so if you were to follow that warmth beyond anyone understanding and beyond the bottom part of it there. Yep. And that trail of islands. Can you follow the... Oh, I've forgotten about the trail yeah, of islands. Yeah, you follow that down there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the trail of islands is a bit of an unknown at the moment. Yeah, you can feel there's other stuff that... It's oh, an unknown, mm -hmm. but, but if you can follow the feeling yeah, of warmth and the feeling. powerful, benevolent force down mm -hmm. there. <clears throat> and also, as that's happening, can you allow that warmth and benevolence and a very powerful warmth to spread underneath this mm -hmm. to that Leviathan? Mm -hmm. And it may be that as that warmth spreads down there, I don't know whether it can be some kind of melting or softening. What happens to that Leviathan? What happens to that underneath there when that warmth starts to spread down there? Um. Just watch it. Don't try and work it out. Just look and see and let it, let it reveal itself to you. Just let that r r warmth radiate down. And what do you see happens? Don't have to understand it. And it can be very peaceful as you just watch that. Or don't you know? You don't need to know, by the way. It looks like you don't need to know about those islands. You don't need to know what's going to happen with the Leviathan, but when you look, is there anything you see? Um... <laughs> well, actually on a spit, on a spit roast, being rotated round, but... That's a lot of warmth. <laughs> That's the fire burning, yeah? And is that okay when you look um... at that? Well, look, there's a whole other story about that. Um... Yeah, but, but is it okay? Oh, it's okay when I see that. Okay. Yeah. And is it okay to feel that? Yeah, there's a humour. There's a humour okay. to is it. Is it okay to know that? Yeah, it's okay to and know that. And feel that and know that yeah. and see that mm -hmm. without having to explain it? Yep. Okay. And because there's the island, there's the map that you've drawn, and there's the story. Mm -hmm. And each complements the other, but at the moment we're looking at the map, not the story. Mm. And that roast is, that spit is happening. Now, if you were to look at your experience right now and how you are feeling right now, to my appraisal, you have the appearance of being relatively calm. Mm -hmm. And you have that capacity to see the dark underbelly, the humour, the wryness, the What's that word? The irony. Mm -hmm. You know about irony, I think. Mm -hmm. You read Patrick White? No, I'm not quite strong enough. I, you know, I need to have some therapy before I can start to deal with something as black as that. The irony is that he's the only Australian art, you know, writer who's ever got the Nobel Prize for Literature, and we don't publish him. We don't well, celebrate him. It's so sad. But you know, anyway, he's a terribly ironic writer. So. Well, I know he's a watcher from a cast iron, ironic balcony. Is that one of his books? Yeah. <clears throat> but somehow there's a strength in the irony. Mm. You don't yeah, need to fix is. it, you can kind of see it. Yeah, I love Roy and HG. I can listen to Roy and okay. HG and it's just wonderful. Oh, well, mm -hmm. now I'm starting to wonder whether you are a suitable case for treatment. You might be beyond help here. But, <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, the, there are some situations when, when we are in them, it's hard to see the irony. Mm. One definition of humour is tragedy plus time. And sometimes mm. it's difficult to wait for the time. Mm. No, I read that the other day. I'm on a writer's. I get a quote every day from a writer's site, and it, mm. I think I can't remember who it was, but they said, you know, it's a tragedy now, but mm. yeah, with time, it, mm, mm, mm. it's so funny. So there are things that happen that are tragic, and uh, there's no question about the tragedy, mm. but they look very different. Yeah, it's like I'm being invaded with a great desire to laugh at the moment. <laughs> Well, that's very disrespectful of you. 
<laughs> I, hope you, I hope you're laughing at yourself and not at me, because, you know, I've got a fragile ego. And if you start <laughs> laughing at me, I'll need some help with it. But um, uh, we, we had a look at, um, and I don't know whether you ever had this experience, but I, I drove past the um, state school, a uh, primary school I went to as a kid in Melbourne. <coughs> And uh, the classrooms were shrunk. <laughs> even the front <laughs> fence was shrunk. And it wasn't even the right name. They changed mm. the name of it. And there was a swing bridge out the back of it over a creek. And that was different. Mm. It didn't wobble and shake like it used to. Mm. And there are a lot of things that when we revisit, we see them differently mm. from how they felt. Mm. Uh, something can be a certain way in the memory of the child and then an adult looks and, oh. and it seemed to me that that school had shrunk because I had grown. I was bigger and so the school was smaller. But I had an occasion to visit my secondary school. And I didn't grow at all when I was there. Mm. Uh, not only physically, but uh, in other ways too, I think. But, um, <clears throat> and that also seemed smaller. So it wasn't just a physical, a relative physical dimension. Now, you came here wanting to have some alteration in your life. And I've noticed that when someone comes to look for some change, there's usually more than a beginning that's already there that started just by thinking about it. Mm. And also I've noticed that when someone comes for a particular concern, when they go, that process continues. But I'm wondering what you can notice is different from in yourself now than when you arrive. In yourself, within yourself, what's different? Um, I feel really calm and centred. Yeah. Where are those tears? They're not here now. I could muster them back up, though. You go what? I could muster them back up. Do you want to try? If you wanted to muster them back up, how would you go about it? Um, could you do a decent, decent kind of cry now? Oh, yeah, no, I could. Show us. Well, I'd have to tell you a bit of a story. Oh, go on then. No, I don't want to. Oh, okay. But why would I want to? I don't, I don't want know. To. Yeah. Well, okay, so you could, but you don't want to. It's no. nice to have that power no. over mm. your experience, yeah. to know that if you wanted to, you could. And if you don't want to, why would you? Mm. Why should you? Mm. That's up to you. Mm. It's nice to know that. And also, <clears throat> that how are you feeling in yourself? You said you're feeling centered, you're in your body. Yeah, no, it was a really nice thing because it was. I hadn't see the cooked, see I had a big wizard's hat on and I, and, and a beard. Well, first I got the beard. <laughs> Great, <laughs> you know, don't like getting hairs on my chest, on my chin. But so I had a beard and then I had a big hat and I just thought and I was thinking about Prospero. Not necessarily that Prospero has that, but I like Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. And so I suppose, you know, it's a fairly powerful thing to think to that you're a magician. Um, yeah, and it, was a, and it was a similar thing, except this time yeah. the magician was... I was happy to be that magician. I've yes. been thinking about that this morning. Exactly. I mean, I like to be the magician in collaboration with some other force, which I guess for me is my understanding of God. I have an understanding of God and that. So I'm... Mm. Um, I don't want to be completely just the magician by myself because I wouldn't trust myself. And you know that God works in mysterious ways. God does work in very mysterious ways. You've experienced ways. that. Mm. And, and I like Ariel, the sprite, but she wasn't there, but I fully understand her. I mean, mm. she's naughty and goes off and does all sorts of things. Do you and, understand that? Yeah, and I she saw... She may have even taken drugs as a teenager. She probably did. And I mm. also saw, before any of that started, before I was on the chair, and while you were speaking, I can't remember what you were talking about, but I was off 
doing sailing out the side of the island over that side, lots of sailing, and so that was nice because I could be free how, how and you, go out in the water. How come you weren't listening to what I was saying? I was listening to everything you were saying. But, it was just but you said that you weren't listening, you were well, off sailing. You were trying sailing. to get me to go down and the thing, and yeah, you know, yeah, and no. my face was softening and all of that, but yeah. I was off over here. Yeah. <laughs> not listening to me, you were just having your own no, experience. No, I was fully listening to you. <laughs> and not only that, you had power over your experience. You're not going to give me power to make you feel, you know, softening your face and all that rubbish. You were no, off sailing. No, I was still already doing yeah. the softening. But, but you were like sailing. Like women can multitask, so I was doing that. <laughs> and, um, and then when I was in my I chair... You really know how to make a person feel inadequate, you know. <laughs> and when I was in my chair, I did think, and, and you really went out on a limb. I mean, I take my hat off to you for going out Which on a limb. Which hat are you taking off? The wizard's hat, the okay. wizard's hat. Because uh, <clears> the, the, the suffering thing, that was, that, was a, that was a slightly dangerous move, but it, it was yeah. fine. But oh, well, I've always been insensitive mm, to danger. No, so. no, no. <laughs> It's a daring move, okay. um, but How yeah, and, and the thing with the with the window, that that was amazing because, you know, and the fact that we met um, Gary before he left, the Muslim guy, and, and the fact that, that he's made the whole church is How all around. Jesus. Oh, mind I you, don't know. Jesus is um. He's just a saint. Yeah, he's or a, something, a or prophet. A holy person. Yeah, yeah, a prophet. Um, and so he he's, he's made the whole, the, the, all the walls are green. So the forest. It, it, look, I'll. I'll Give Caroline a picture for you. It's just and the most somehow, beautiful window. And now that you've—I mean, that's not new to you—but you've connected with that in a way that perhaps it can help to connect yeah. you with yourself. And I mean, look—you know—the the thing about the the calm and the yeah. the stuff going back. You know, I mean, my grandfather and my aunt, who were two of the people involved, and you know, and then there's heavy stuff in the Bible about don't hurt any of my little ones. Or, yeah, you know, sure. Better for you to have a millstone around your neck. When and my the grand Muslims know about that mm, too. When my granddad was 87, which was a couple of years ago. He hanged himself in, in, oh, yeah. in, in, the, in the shed up north where he lives in the north of Tasmania. And my aunt, who was also involved in the abuse of me, was the one who found him. And, oh, yeah. you know, so there's the tragedy of the little child seeing that. Mm -hmm. You know, when I found out that as an adult a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, you know, the child in me wept because she felt responsible. She still felt responsible for the fact that he'd hanged himself and that she, the aunt was the one who found him. And so... You know, and, and I mean, look, I'm the oldest granddaughter, I'm the oldest grandchild. And, and a small child can think that. And an adult can have a different view. Yeah, but I mean, I read a poem out. I read a poem out at the front of that church and, you know, and um, I was very brave and I couldn't sing. You are very I brave. couldn't sing Amazing Grace because I had to keep it together. And on the, all the way home driving, I kept singing, you know, when we've been there 10,000 years bright shining as the sun, thinking, well, that would be a different grandfather. That wouldn't be the same grandfather as I had. But it's a country town. I did all of that because I, and I read a sort of a footsteps kind of a poem out and I changed the ending and made it very nice and did it terribly well. And it, look, they are, you know, they could have been out of Muriel's wedding, my family. They, that side of the family is very bizarre. And we all went out. Nobody could bear to go to the, the cremation bit. And this is where the Roy and HG started making me laughing and the, the humour of looking back on it. But, you know, we're all sort of saying, Bye, Pop, you know, waving him off in <laughs> bloody hearse. You know, no, it was, it was bizarre. You've seen that episode oh, of Mother, oh, and, Mother and Son and, where, the, where Mother is she's yeah, going to the like thing that. and the oranges kept falling into it the... It was like that. Yeah. And, and mm. after I said my poem, which was the last thing, I don't know why they made me go last, but it was the last thing, then the, the song that came on, on the, they played a CD, was... Um, Jim Reeves, put your sweet lips a little closer to me. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm God. thinking, how much more uh, fucking bizarre can this I get? Know. You know, this oh man has God. committed incest. Here I am, trying to be yeah. brave and reading yeah. out his thing. Yeah. I tell you, yeah. Roy and HG would have understood. My and, God, you know, he does work in mysterious ways. Well, he does. I think he works through Roy and HG. And I will have to have a very serious <laughs> chat to God when we actually meet face to face. <laughs> and I, you know... <laughs> He will get, or she, or but, both, or whatever, will get a bit of To come back show. to what you were saying, you know, once you were lost. Yeah. And now I live it, you know, I mean, and look, the psalm, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love that psalm, and I am living in a church. I mean, it's, my life is strange, you know, but I enjoy it. I mean, for all I said before, I, I think, do enjoy it. I think but, if it wasn't strange, been, it would be very strange for you. Yeah. You wouldn't would, enjoy it at all. I wouldn't, because no. I like interesting. Yeah, well, well interesting is one thing, but like uh, the way you do things is a little bit on further on the edge than interesting, I think. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. If it just got back to interesting, it would be boring for you. You'd it have to do really something boring, to... Yeah, yeah, I think so. so the, but, but I don't like creating the familiar 
you know how people do create the familiar and the familiar can be from a very dysfunctional family so you're creating something that hurts you I don't mind creating the familiar intensity and, and excitement but I don't want the the nastiness or the I used to create self-sabotage and I don't want to do that well anymore. once you were lost yes so I'm not you reckon I'm completely found not really, I don't think. <laughs> well, I mean, you I'm can always lose yourself hiding. again. You can yeah. lose well, that yourself was me in going the... off on the... Yeah, so so, I didn't yeah. go very far, actually. I was coming yeah. back here. I was going out and back in now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Now, is there anything more that... There's a lot more that we could talk about, a lot more that would, uh, we could do that might be helpful? Well, as a client, I would like to know if I come again or if that's just the one thing and I come and... You, or do I come again? Or? No, I don't think so. I think you've come enough. I think okay. that this... Uh, <laughs> On whatever pillow you're looking about here, but um, <laughs> the, the the idea was um, that we could have this experience that would yes. be useful to you and uh, well, lucky somehow. Lucky it was an intense sort of. So mm. we feel that that's a complete thing. Mm. And then it can move on and. Uh, yeah. And no, no, I'm happy it. with that. I just mm. like to know what's going, what's happening next. Sure. So thank you very much. Please don't show the details um, department because I shouldn't have told you about that other stuff I said. But no, you never shouldn't mind. Have. You shouldn't have. <laughs> Well, I really shouldn't do it. I know. I forgot I was being filmed. I know. <laughs> but um, you like to live on the edge and have a bit of danger, so that, that was useful for that to happen too. <laughs> but don't self-sabotage yourself by choking on the tea. No, I won't. No, good. <laughs> So when do we finish? Shall we stop now? Yeah, I think so. Uh, just, if I can, can I, can I, I'm not just being familiar here, say so thank you. Well, thank you very much. It's a very, it very generous very gift. I, the, 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 and you've given me a very generous gift. You were very intuitive. And well, I think you, the, the benefit that you'll get you, is actually you took way an more than risk. you realised. You did. No, you did. You did. Well, you did. I know you did. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.